Uh, yeah, so I'm going to start with the formulas, which are more concrete. And so more specifically, they come from studying the two-dimensional radon transform. Uh, so this is defined by taking functions that are on the punctured plane. And then we consider lines in the punctured plane, which can also be identified with the punctured plane itself. So for any line, you just integrate your original function on that line. Uh, so this defines this operator, which takes functions on the punctured plane to the punctured plane itself. And so to get nice formulas, we're only going to consider func uh, k, so functions that are rotation invariant. So k is going to denote the compact group of rotations. And so this acts on the punctured plane. And we're only going to look at these functions. And if a function is rotation invariant, it only depends on the norm of the uh, vector. So that means that we're really considering just functions that uh, depend on the norm, which is a positive real number. And so the nicest such functions are just characters of the real numbers. Uh, and so in fact, any function on the reals you can consider as some integral of characters by using Mellon transform. So anyways, the characters of real numbers are going to be given by complex parameter. So for any complex number s, we define this f sub s to be this character on the reals. And I use this particular normalization of minus 1 minus s. So now some easy facts are, firstly, uh, the Mellon transform, if you define it on this f sub s, it'll converge as long as the real part of s is greater than 0. And if you just look at how the, Mel uh, the radon transform, sorry, I said uh, radon before. So radon transform, how it uh, is compatible with homotheties, you'll see that it has to send any character to a multiple of this character corresponding to minus s. And so this multiple is going to be some scalar depending only on s. And in fact, it has a name. It's Harashandra's c function. So now we get to the formula, which is a theorem due to Gindikin and Kapelovich, which computes this c function. And it's given as a ratio of uh, particular gamma functions with this pi multiple. But so now, for the purposes of uh, well, the rest of the talk, you can also see that it can be written as just a ratio of local zeta factors, uh, where we're noticing that the reals are a particular local field. So the local zeta factors are just defined as this normalization of the gamma function. OK, so now I gave you a formula, and I want to start relating it to geometry. So in all of this geometry stuff, we're going to be working over a finite field. So the only local fields that are going to appear are the fields for Laurent polynomials. So we're going to have to replace everything where before we were using this local field of reals to the field of Laurent polynomials. But so luckily, everything that I previously said basically just goes through where you just change this bold R to an F. So the radon transform is defined in the same way. You just integrate over lines. And now uh, our compact group is going to be the uh, SL2 with values in Taylor polynomials. And so we still have that if we consider k invariant functions, it only depends on the norm. But now, because we're using a non-Archimedean local field, the norm is this maximum of the absolute values of each of the coordinates of your vector. But so now we can still define these special functions f sub s, which are just characters in the same way. And we have the same facts that it'll converge as long as the real part of s is greater than 0. And it still sends a character to a multiple of a character. And now we have a non-Archimedean version of the gindikin kaprilovich formula, which is a theorem that was proved independently by Langlands and MacDonald. So um, because we're using non-Archimedean fields, it's going to be just a rational polynomial in q to the minus, uh, rational function in q to the minus s. But to give it this uniform presentation, you also notice that it's its ratio of zeta factors, where now we're considering the zeta function for the local, the non-Archimedean local field, which is just defined as 1 minus q to the minus s to the minus 1. So I gave you this formula, but the formula still depends on this complex variable s. And 
If you're working with algebraic geometry over a finite field, there's not going to be any complex parameter that shows up. So I want to show that this uh, C function is really just equivalent to a bunch of, or a function on the integers, or you can think of it as just a sequence of numbers. So we'll just define the sequence uh, a sub n. So really, it's a sequence only on the positive integers. So it's 1 when n is equal to 0, and then 1 minus q inverse when n is greater than 0. But now, uh, as I mentioned, the c function here is a rational function in q to the minus s. So if you take the Taylor expansion in the direction of q to the minus s, then you see that really the c function is just the generating function for this uh, sequence of a sub n's. And so here, because we're considering a function on the integers, the generating function uh, is really just another way of saying Mellon transform. So now I change the formula into just this like discrete bunch of numbers. Yeah. A for positive n is the constant. Yes. One minus zero. Yeah. So now I want to relate this sequence of numbers to uh, Zastava spaces. And I'm not really going to define Zastava spaces because it gets kind of technical. Uh, but so these are some finite dimensional algebraic varieties, which were first introduced by Finkelberg and Mirkovich to study semi-infinite flag varieties. And then they were also used uh, because, so they have a lot of good properties, but one of the main ones is that, so they're finite dimensional and they're just algebraic varieties. So they provide local models that can also be used to study the Drinfeld's compactifications of certain moduli stacks, which are like, well, they're stacks, so they're not going to be uh, algebraic varieties and as concrete. And so this was work done by uh, Braverman, Finkelberg, Gerskuri, and Merkovich. So in all of any kind of uh, geometric representation theory, we always have some smooth projective curve over the finite field. And for any point on this curve, we get an associated local field, which can be identified with this field of Laurent polynomials. So the Zasova spaces, you get one. So in this case, you get one for every positive integer. And it's just some finite dimensional algebraic variety with the map to the symmetric power of the curve. Uh, so I'm not going to give like a precise definition, but just to be a little more concrete so it's not a totally abstract thing. So I think about the symmetric power of the curve as just effective divisors on the curve uh, with degree n. So then if we just look at the divisor, which is just a single point with multiplicity n, then the fiber of this map is just gm times the n minus 1 plane. And so this at least gives you some concrete idea of what this Zasova space looks like. And in fact, um, well, you can kind of piece together the entire space by uh, describing the fibers in a similar way. But I'm just going to go to, straight to the theorem, which uh, relates this, these functions, a sub n, that I defined before with this space. Uh, so this is um, multiple works by Braverman, Finkelberg, Gates, Curry, and Merkovich. And so the main point is that so they don't actually use the formulas that uh, I described before. So they do everything sheaf theoretically. So this can be thought of as a kind of geometric harmonic analysis. But so I'm just going to state it in this function theoretic format. So any point on this uh, symmetric power of the curve is some divisor. So it's a bunch of points with multiplicities. And then if we just count the number of rational points on the fiber at this divisor, then the answer is this Euler product. Uh, and then each of the terms is just this a sub n together with a power of q. And so like, this is not a coincidence. Like, uh, the fact, like, from the definitions of these uh, Zastava spaces, uh, like, there's a geometric reason that the numbers actually correspond. Okay, so now I'll talk a little bit about how this relates to what I'm currently working on. So, um, Secretly, I didn't really talk about it, but this radon transform uh, is actually the same as the intertwining operator for the group SL2. So I'm really uh, interested in the intertwining operator, and more particularly, 
I want to study inversion formulas for the intertwining operator. Uh, and so not just for the k invariant case. So for that group SL2, I have some uh, like explicit formulas, but I'd like to get these formulas also for a general reductive group. And so uh, in the C function, we see that we have this ratio of gamma functions in the real case. So even when the group, uh, the, it's not k invariant, we still get some product of ratios of gamma functions. And there's no like, conceptual explanation for why that's happening at the moment. And so over a non-Archimedean local field, this inversion of intertwining operators actually relates to asymptotics of functions on G and also to this geometry of the wonderful compactification of G. And it's expected that even over the reals, there should be some kind of explanation like this. And so I've only been talking about local fields, but really the, I wanted to study uh, intertwining operators because they're closely related to functional equations for Eisenstein series. And so I really want to use these intertwining operators in order to study the global theory of automorphic forms more. And then on the geometric side, so these Zasova spaces, as I mentioned, there's local models for other spaces, but they have generalizations to, uh, well, you can define them for spherical varieties. And so these are related to these other geometric spaces defined by Gates, Curry, and Nadler. And so I wanted now try to go the opposite direction of the direction of my talk, which is to kind of use this geometry of sheaves in order to be able to compute some uh, formulas related to spherical varieties. And these formulas are conjectured to be related to these local L factors, which should show up somehow in period integrals. All right, uh, so that's it. Thank you.